will make up for membership of the world's biggest single market that in two days' time we get ripped out of against our will. The member has just helpfully demonstrated that the benefits in return for all of this harm being imposed on us are pretty much non-existent. Even fishing, the one sector that did expect benefits from Brexit, has been comprehensively let down. The Tory fishing promises were never deliverable. Many of us pointed that out, but they were made and the industry had a right to rely on them. Every single one of them have been broken. Douglas Ross, Alistair Jack, every Scottish Tory MP said in writing that the UK and Scotland must have complete control and full sovereignty over waters. They said that tying fisheries access to a trade deal was a red line that must not be crossed. If it was, they said, the UK would be leaving the common fisheries policy, I quote, in name only, and that in their words, not mine, that would be a betrayal of Scotland. Well, that betrayal is there for all to see in this deal. A long-term arrangement guaranteeing EU boats access to UK waters, access and quota shares included in the future economic partnership, access to waters not just tied to the overall trade deal, hardwired into it. Every single Tory promise to Scotland's fishermen broken, every Tory red line crossed. But you know, it's even worse than that. For no, I think it's better the Tories listen to the reality of their sellout of fishing. The key whitefish stocks that so much of the Scottish industry depends on, uh, for them there will be fewer, fewer fishing opportunities for Scotland under this deal than under the common fisheries policy. Presiding officer, this must be the worst negotiating outcome in history. A hard Brexit for Scotland and a comprehensive sellout of the Scottish fishing industry. That's why the verdicts of fishermen themselves are so damning. The National Federation of Fishermen's Organisations, fishing has been sacrificed. The Scottish White Fish Producers Association, deeply aggrieved. The Scottish Fishermen's Federation, the deal does not restore sovereign UK control over fisheries. The UK is, I quote them, now a coastal state with one hand tied behind our back. Utterly damning, but utterly justified. The fishing industry, misled by the Tories, sold out by the Tories all over again. Betrayed by the Tories on the way into the EU, betrayed by the Tories on the way out. And it's part, it's part of a pattern. Not that long ago, Ruth Davidson made it known that she would resign rather than support a differential deal for Northern Ireland. It's amazing what the offer of a place in the House of Lords can do to the merest whiff of a Ruth Davidson principle. Adam Tompkins, I'm not sure if he's here, went even further. No unionist, he said, could ever endorse any sort of differentiated deal for Northern Ireland, but that's what this deal yep. delivers. A hard Brexit for Scotland and a special single market deal for Northern Ireland. They're even dragging us out of Erasmus, a truly wonderful horizon expanding scheme that gives young people opportunities to live and study across Europe. And again, the Tories here told us that wouldn't happen. Erasmus is something which all parties agree must continue post-Brexit, the words of Jackson Carlaw. But the UK government has now turned its back on Erasmus and sold out our young people as well. And Jackson Carlaw, not a peep. I can only assume that his ermine cloak is in the post. <laughs> Presenting officer, what is now very clear is this. The Scottish Tories are ignored by their Westminster bosses just like Scotland as a whole is. But they lack the gumption or the self-respect to do anything about it. They are Boris Johnson's mouthpiece. They will abandon any principle, break any promise, sell out any sector if Westminster and Boris Johnson tell them to. Today is conclusive proof of that.